Hi guys, so here called welcome to another Brit Asia Live. Um it's Raj and I hope you guys are having a lovely uh Tuesday evening. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Um give me all these sides on I hope it's the on Tik Tok yeah. After a very long time, I have finally got another woman and a very strong woman on my life. Um we've spoken to a handful of women, but not many, okay? So but this this person who I'm going to join today um is very strong uh a beautiful actress but um one of the very few artists that has gone all out about the farmers protest as well um she has collaborated with massive names like Bill Duke Assange uh and uh yeah let's just uh, get her on and uh it's uh, Monica if you guys don't know already if you haven't checked the poster but uh to be uh, speaking to her today. Um Hi. Hi Monica, how are you? Good. It's I know it's the evening over there, but it's like 11 in the morning over here. Yeah. Good morning. I know you just text the saying that you're finishing off breakfast and we were like let us let us give you some time. <laughs> oh my god, you look so beautiful. How are you? What's going I'm on? I'm very good. I'm very good. How are you doing first of all? I'm doing great. And I've thoroughly enjoyed going through your Instagram and getting to know you virtually. And you look very pretty in suits and chumkas. Thank you so much. That's amazing. But well, we don't really need to go through your profile because we all know who you are. Uh, but Monica, you've um, gone all out with the farmers' protest, which I'm going to come on a bit later on. How has COVID been for you as an actress? Because obviously you're not in India, but no. work. Do you work there as well? So he, here's what happened. Um I got engaged like my rishta got pakka at the end of 2018 and then I had my roka 2019 and I was supposed to get married 2020. Okay. So I had like literally just moved back 2018 2019. So I was here when covid hit. But the way covid affected me was that my wedding got postponed. You know, so it kind of like pushed me like my entire life back a year and like everything shut down right and because of covid my parents were like well you can't really go back to india and work now like we don't know like like i haven't grown up in india so i don't have the immunity that most people from india do like i still get sick if i eat like not like outside food and stuff like i have to have bottled water in the whole nine yards so my parents were just like relax for a bit like you've been there long enough like spend time with us but I think with COVID what happened was that I enjoyed being at home because I feel like living at home like my life my life here in the US is very very different from life in India and there is something very nice about you know having your mom and grandma constantly looking after you you know like have you eaten do you want prawn for breakfast what do you want to do and then like you know grandma's like tere se nutella like it's it's a very um like for your emotional and mental stability it's a very solid thing to have versus being by yourself and you know the entertainment is an industry that you don't know what's around the corner ever so the security of being home has been addictive i don't want to leave yeah yeah that's amazing monica i do know that you can speak both with your punjabi you bolna hai to see punjabi actress also of course you can't speak punjabi um also kai ke main puchna chahni hai i do want to know ke like उथेगाजी Yeah. So I would say like I I think Diljeet and Gippy are settled outside of India if I'm not mistaken. I know like Amy is like from Punjab Punjab, but I didn't I don't feel like I actually had a problem with anyone. So I felt really really well taken care of. So I started off with tips and I think tips being um a Bollywood production went above and beyond. And I think I got signed actually because i was from abroad they were looking for 
a more um, Western kind of appeal for some reason. Because both the characters I played um, weren't like Pindadinha Kurinya, you know? My first Kaptan and Amber Sarya, they were, um, they, they were modernized, you know, Indian girls. And I, for some reason, they thought that I could do it easier. So, and my Punjabi is very kid. Like, I, I talk Dwabi Punjabi. Like, it's not, it's not, um, Angreji Punjabi, Jate Kuri no Bolana in Yonda, but then you get an accent, Kadija and the like, it's not like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was that, like, you know, the first kind of moment you kind of thought, Kitalo, me acting Karnia, Ekun Jati, and how did the kind of family take it? Okay, Hamisha Kaz, I'm like an entertainment jury, Kuria Lini Hegi Industries, certainly. So, my family was actually very, so I've been modeling since I was very young. So my family to begin with has always been very supportive, especially my dad. My mom was more, con- my mom wasn't concerned of me acting. She was concerned of me moving to India because um, the Delhi rape case had just happened. And like, see, because when you live there, you know that there is a place in Bombay, there is a place in Delhi, there is a place in Punjab, there is a place in Punjab. But when you see, without understanding that Bombay is more of a metropolitan city the influences are different there's more um you know people from outside India that live there not like you know like it's 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 an economic hub people are highly educated like like you don't notice that or the influence of Maratha culture in Bombay you don't notice that or see that or understand that until you live there So um, for my mom, it was very important for her to know, like, where is she going? Who is she staying with? Who's going to, like, you know, make sure she's safe? What if she gets, like, it was a typical mother-like questions that um, she had. And I think um, my, my, my dad and my first, she came and, like, settled me into Bombay, helped me get an apartment, you know, like a vehicle. So it was good. Like, th- there was no... this thing i don't know if it, like like in my extended family yes there was a lot of stigma via the biani hun on this and that but even that got debunked so i i just want to say this we social stigmas can only affect you if you allow them they 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 people who stigmatize they feed off of fear ek wari tusi dar kar kad do na kisi cheez da then the other person has no power whatsoever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Monica, you have been one of the very few um, actresses or, I mean, all of them are Punjabi, who are artists, almost all of them are not the same as the kids, the farmers, the protests, the children, 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 but you're one of the very few who are still alive, who are still alive, who are still alive, obviously, the Punjabi industry is a lot of خاص رشتہ بھی ہے بٹ اس دے نال ہی ਤੁਸੀਂ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਵੀ ਬਾਹਰ ਹੋ ਸੋ ਇੱਕ ਚੀਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਕਨੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਗਵਾਚ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਉੱਥੇ ਕੀ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਵਾਈ ਥਿਸ ਯੂ نو ਵਾਈ ਸੋ ਓਪਨਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਈ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਕਨੈਕਟਿਡ ਵਿਦ ਥਿਸ ਯੂ نو ਅੰਦੋਲਨ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਮਲਟੀਪਲ ਰੀਜ਼ਨਸ ਦਾ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਰੀਜ਼ਨਸ ਥੈਟ ਆਈ ਫਿਗਰਡ ਆਊਟ ਮਚ ਲੇਟਰ ਵਾਸ ਥੈਟ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਰਾਈਟ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਦੇ ਲਿਵ ਇਨ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਫ੍ਰੀਡਮ ਆਫ ਸਪੀਚ ਡਜ਼ਨਟ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟ ਇਨ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਟਸ ਬਿਗ You don't know if someone comes out against Modi and be like, Modi, like, what the hell are you doing? You don't know if they're going to get arrested tomorrow. You don't know. Like, like, and, and uh, you, like, people underestimate that. Like, people want to, like, bash people for not saying something or for staying silent. But it's a very real threat to not find work or to be boycotted in Bollywood or get arrested. It's, it's a very real threat. So before you go after... you know, other Punjabi actors understand that, that these people have families, these people have mothers, fathers, grandparents, children that they also need to protect, right? I can say it sitting abroad because I literally have nothing that someone can hit me with, right? So my, I can use my voice. That's the first thing. And I, and I really hope people take that to heart because Yes, like if you outright go work with a network that is bashing the farmer's protest, yeah, then please, please do hold the artist accountable. But if, if they're just, you know, if they're posting but not coming out hard, understand the reason. Understand that, okay, you know, these persons are native of this area and they also need to survive here tomorrow. The farmer's protest is not going to go on forever. So what, what, happens, what happens when it ends? You know, these people are still going to need to work and to grow in life. They still have 
families. They still have kids that they're going to need to send to college. You know, they still have relatives that are need to go to find work somewhere. Why did I go out hard? Okay, so the protests have been going on since September. Obviously, I knew about it, but I wasn't as vocal. I didn't become vocal until Thanksgiving when the farmers started proceeding from Punjab to Delhi. Again, I had no clue about it. I didn't find out, like, it didn't hit me until my grandmother started being affected by it. And I'm sure you also being a Punjabi, you could understand that our elders have traumas that haven't been addressed from 47. Or 40, I'm sorry, I got my years wrong. 42, 47, when was partition? 47. 47, okay. Um, so from partition, and then they have traumas from 84. And, the, and there's a lot in between that happened that we yeah. haven't documented. So that's also very important to know that our grandparents were the last generation before British left. So that there's a trauma of that from people constantly telling them they're not good enough. So there's that self-esteem trauma, right? Then there was partition. Between partition and 84, a lot of stuff happened that hasn't been documented, right? So we will not even know the extent of the traumas that our grandparents have. Yeah. And 84 is a trauma that not only our grand grandparents face, but also our parents have that trauma, right? Then obviously, because we have a connect with both our grandparents and parents, like our grandparents carried our seed. So obviously some, some way genetically, we must have carried the trauma into us. Anyway, long story short, my grandma was witnessing, seeing pictures, seeing videos. Obviously it was being discussed in our house. And, and she fell into her head, right? And me, someone who's very close to my grandmother and someone who, you know, just overall cares about, you know, their grandparent. I was like, all right, you know, we're not, this is not the 80s. There's a, there's a free press, there's free journalism. Like, like, this is not like in my head, I'm like, this is going to be a piece of cake. Like, how can someone even like grandma, like, what are you thinking? Like, it's not like, this is not how it's going to be. So anyways, I'd read the bills back in September, partly, yes, because, you know, we, I come from a family of farmers and I wanted to know what was going on in Punjab. But when I started trying to do research and trying to get more information, like what's going on, what's happening, the kind of news I was reading and the kind of stuff I was seeing really startled me, especially the stuff I was seeing on Z, you know, calling our farmers Khalistani and all sorts of nonsense. And I'm just like, like, what what is happening like like you know like because I didn't understand so I even though I lived in India for so many years I didn't understand how biased the media is in India and that's what hit me so I was like okay well this is a problem then I started looking at American you know news like see can we find anything besides one times article or was a New York Times I think I couldn't find anything yeah. And I was like, well, this is another problem. Like, okay, then I, you know, just started like looking around, seeing what other people were doing. And it hit me that, hey, I have almost 400,000 followers. You know, maybe not everyone will see it, but if I post, somebody will see it. You know, that, okay, if we, if we don't have Indian news helping us, if we don't have American news helping us, if we don't have a government on our side, what do we do? Right? So I was like, in, so at that moment, I did not know how thoroughly I was going to be involved in this. But I did have a sense that, okay, this is going to be a very grassroots run campaign. Whatever we do, like it in what it ended up happening was social media ended up being the, um, the front runner in this the front runner of carrying information and it been so effective that the Indian government is now trying to shut it down. They're like, yeah. They've been having such a hard time controlling the narrative that they're like, all right, down with social media. Also, what happened was, so my, uh, at that time, my significant other was from California. So what ended up happening was that I, you know, when I went to go visit him, I realized that what a lot of people were doing in California was content, contacting congressmen and getting, trying to get the American government on board. So I was like, oh, like, you know, let's research the American political system. and They're doing it. Why can't we do this on the East Coast? So um, I, I basically came back and 
I try to get people on the East Coast to do the same thing. Get your elected officials involved. Contact whoever you can. And my, um, my congressman was um, Congressman McGovern. And he was, um, he was also, uh, he's also the chair of the Tom Lanto's Human Rights Commission. So I was like, oh, like, you know, bingo. So after many months, like I started this in December, like I started it literally calling and contacting and trying to get in touch with him um, early, early December. And then I had my meeting with him, believe it or not, January 26th, America time. And this was after everything had happened. And I was like, and I, and, and I woke up literally shaking. I was like, how am I going to explain everything that's happening to him? How am I going to explain that Indian media is not real, this and that? And I get on the call and he's like, don't even worry about it. We know exactly how the Indian media works. I was like, oh, okay. I'm late to the table. So that's basically what the story's been with me. Yeah, yeah. Any kind of like fear, you know, obviously when you're talking about this and like, you know, I personally have noticed it as well. You get a lot of hate, you know, when you start posting about the farmers' protests, you say some statements or you say, you know, some, some very like, you know, out there statements and I have said them, you have said them as well. What is the kind of like, do you have any fear? Because obviously we're both in the same kind of industry and like, you know, we're all at some point. And like, whether you're in the industry or not, like we're all at some point would want to go back to India and obviously spend some time there. There is obviously this fear because obviously our parents, like I have experienced, you know, my team have kind of like sometimes said, okay, maybe that's not the way to like phrase it. Maybe just phrase it differently. Have you had that as well? I've decided I won't be stepping foot back in India for a while, at least until the Modi government is out. And I've understood, realized that maybe it won't ever be a possibility, right? Because I've spoken in front of the, you know, the Indian consulate in San Francisco, like, you know, I've been quite heavily involved with the UN. And like, I, I know, I know I'm not well liked. And I know the possibility of me um, going to... India is probably not going, may, might not ever happen. And you know what? I'm okay with it because at the end of the day, Rajdeep, it, it has to be community first, right? We're a minority community. That's what we have to understand. In America, there's only like 500,000 of us. That's nothing. That's less than the African American community. That's less than the, the Chinese community. Like we are we like we are an official like when you say minority like we are a minority and if people with platforms don't go out and be like you know to hell with this community first no matter what then we're in trouble and and one thing i've discovered and i and i say this to everyone one thing i've discovered through the farmers protest is that we have key people all over the world and i call it the network of superheroes who actually really, really care about the fund and are doing, they're one man hero, one man shows, and they're doing whatever they can in their own capacity to help. And it's been an, like, it's been amazing to interact and find and be picked up by people. But like, but at the end of the day, when you belong to a minority community, we don't have the same luxury of staying silent. Staying silent is a privilege allotted to the majority, right? We don't have that privilege. And, and I understand, like, if you're living in India and if you're living in a, in a BJP state in India that you can't speak up, if you're living abroad and you're not speaking up, you are a gadad. That's what you are. Because we don't, no one in our community has that privilege. The reason why the farmers are still there I, we're hitting 100 days is because people have stayed silent. Now, when it comes to the hate. So initially, I was like, oh, this is strange. But then when I realized that, okay, it's, it's bots, I just started blocking them on whether that's on Twitter, whether that's on here. And then I have a large group of cousins. And uh, whenever I do a live, they're in there whenever they're probably here wait, waiting for the, you know, the BJP to come in. And um, they're on Twitter, they're on all my lives, they're in my comments. Like if something gets out of hand, like they, they jump to action. But the bottom line is this, being a minority community, we do not have the luxury of staying silent. 
that, that, and that's it. And we won't have that luxury for another 100, 150 years. Yeah. Maybe like our great, great, great grandchildren might have that luxury. We do not. Yeah. Because if you, if you really, like, if, if you were to kind of have a, have a deeper look into it, it is kind of a way to kind of like, you know, kind of get rid. And we've always been that kind of community that they've always tried to get rid of. Because we are the ones that are at the, in the front line in the wars. We're the ones that have been, you know, in 47. We, and we lost the most people as well in 47 and then 84. And then, in, like you said, in between 84, there was a lot. But even after 84, this went on till the 90s. And even till now, we still hear some of our brothers, some of our sisters getting picked up. Like, you know, even in the two, like, you know, the, the 2000s. Like, we have heard it. It's been going on from a very long time. So mm -hmm. when you say sit, staying silent is not, not what we should be doing you know when it comes to uh you see like the youth kind of like kind of coming together and we've seen like a massive wave of the youth coming together do you kind of feel like maybe this is going to be the end of end of like this torture that the community has been going through like i'm just going to talk about not just the farmers but i'm also talking about the community you know so what i think Okay, so I'm going to be quite frank, like I have certain family members, cousins, even people on my in-laws who I've lost a lot of respect for because they haven't said anything or they br spoke briefly after Rihanna spoke because it was cool and then went back into their um, useless lives with no impact. And, but what I'm going to say is this, activism and knowing your history is huge. You know, our grandparents, fought so hard to survive just so they, they could pass that on to us. And, you know, you're saying like, as, not just the farmers issue, but the community as a whole, like, will they stop being tortured? So this is like, the, there, there's a huge explanation. So Congress is its own like little mess of wanting to be secular with communistic traits and wanting to push religion to the side. Um, BJP is its own animal with its Hindutva agenda and, you know, their non-secular view of, you know, the only religion in India that should exist is, is Hinduism and anything else is a threat and that, that includes Sikhs. And then there's this entire, like, just Indian government kind of um, attitude that the Sikhs are dangerous because a, they don't, they're not scared of anything. They just kind of do its own thing. And it's one of the richest communities. It, it, I mean, it's said that almost in the next 20 to 50 years, Sikhs are going to outdo Jews to become the richest community in the world. And that's threatening because, like I said, we are a minority community. So to have enough wealth to surpass, you know, the whoever is current in the lead, that's a huge deal. Then, you know, you know, taking our water, you know, splitting Punjab apart, you know, literally trying to destroy our her heritage, writing books where they change Sikh history, you know, changing the narrative of, you know, Pun of Punjabi history. So there's a lot. Do I think that it is going to change immediately? No. Change is always slow and change is painful. But do I think that we have, like, Yes, this wave has started. Is it going to last? That's on us. That's on us if we keep it alive or we shut it down, right? Um, and keeping it alive, like we like like just today, like I started talking about the Sikh caucus because the reason why the farmers protest hasn't been made a bigger issue in Congress, even though all of us have been calling calling our congressional leaders, is because there are people standing in opposition to it. That needs to be talked about, you know. Um, the Anandpur resolution and, you know, the, the waters of the Ravi and Bias and how the Indian government kind of like changed the narrative of who Sant uh, Janal Sant Pindranavala was, that needs to be talked about, you know? And like there's the RSS influence in, in the English government, the RSS influence in the American government, that needs to be talked about. On, that, on that note, like, you know, I, I have seen some comments within the live as well, but like, you know, we've seen comments before, you've, you've probably come across it. A lot of people have said that this is not an issue about Punjab. This is not an issue about Sikh, uh, Sikhism. This is not an issue about, you know, just the one community. But when it comes to torture and when it comes to when we see, you know, the 27th of January, which is, 
you know, one of the most key dates. I think that day is like, I, I don't think anybody will forget that day when we, we saw like one of our brothers literally getting beaten to almost death, you know? So when we, when we see that, if it had been a Hindu man, do you think the treatment would have been safe? No. no. So then speaking about Sikhism and standing up for the Sikh community, do you think it's the correct time or do you think it's not the correct time or we should only be talking about the farmers and the farmers' bills? So here's the thing, right? We have to do everything simultaneously. Now, let me explain why. Um, yes, do the bills affect all of India? Yes, but they disproportionately affect Punjab and Haryana. When I say disproportionately, it's because um, Punjab has MSP, Haryana has MSP, and there's the the most commonly farmed uh, grain, uh, the com- the commonly farmed produce in Punjab and Haryana is rice and wheat. And without MSP, no one's going to have enough um, competition to sell it at an okay or an acceptable market rate where they can even break even most farmers right now even with msp barely break even so yes it's an all india issue and farmers across india are suffering especially in bihar where these laws have also already been implemented but right now this is going to disproportionately affect punjab and haryana now um yes is it an all india issue and should we keep religion out of it technically yes but you also have to Understand that if it wasn't a Sikh issue, it wouldn't have grown to the length it has, right? I always say, it's a Guru Go Bin Singh Di that no matter where the Sikh community stands, it stands united. Because of Sikhs, because of Sikhs, because of Sikhs, there's funding coming in. Because of Sikhs, you know, everything is moving forward. And even Rakesh Tikat understands that. That's why no matter where he goes, he goes, ko saath rakhna hai, ko saath rakhna hai. because without the Sikhs, yes, there, it's, it's not possible. It was not possible for the farmers protest to get the extent of coverage it did. I think I want to say 2018 or 2019, there was a farmers pro a big farmers protest in um, Tamil Nadu, I want to say where they actually carried around the skeleton, the, 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 the skeletons of the heads of their family members who had committed suicide due to unregulated interest rates, you know, and because of being in debt. And literally there were three articles in the U.S. and it just, nobody cared. Nobody cared. And outside of India, because the community didn't stand like this. The community didn't stand like this. The community outside of India didn't have... Um, did it, for some reason, and it, and we had the CAA protest. There, you know, there was protests against like Love Jihad. Everything. The reason why this has gained the international traction that it did is because of the Sikh community. Now, here's the other thing: all the pro, um, uh, the Kassan rallies that are happening. Who are putting them together? The Sikh community, right? Right. So abroad. I don't want to say that like it's become a Sikh issue abroad, but it's like, yes, we've stood up. We have stood up. And like I said, it's because we have that ingrained in us. A, it's the traumas that are speaking, you know, from the past. That's the biggest thing. Our traumas are speaking. Two, we're like, all right, our community is in peril. We need to get up and step into action. And the Sikh community has that. That's why people are saying that when when the government did this, because they... The, in, the Indian government did not understand what they were getting into. They thought it was going to be the same as the Tamil Nadu protest. They thought it was going to be the same as the CAA protest. They thought it was going to be the same as every other protest that has ha- happened. They didn't understand that they were going to get dragged through the mud at the extent that they have. And that was their mistake. And I'm yeah. very glad they made that mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your point is basically that, you know, the pen- the Punjabi and the Sikh community have all spoken up and mm-hmm. that's why we're in the highlight right now. That's why it's kind of being connected to the religion and the community. But if, let's say, everybody was to speak out, if all India was to speak out, then yes, it would have been not seen as a Punjabi issue. No, no, no. I think, first off, the Indian media is, dis- is un- um, 
incorrectly portraying it as Punjab the issue. There are protests happening in every single state in India, in every single state, because ag- agricultural reforms have been needed in all of India, not just uh, agriculture, agricultural reforms, more regulations in agriculture, more regulations in banks. Hold on. Um, agricultural reforms, um, banking reforms, just more regulations are needed in every single sector. And people recognize that. So in, in, in citizens have been asking for agricultural reforms for years. But what they've been asking for is... Um, more like a, like a more structured MSP guarantee, more regulations on price guarantees, more regulations that they're not going to be screwed, more regulations on the banks, more regulations on fertilizers and the kind of things that are in the fertilizers, more regulations on like how water moves through Punjab, the irrigation systems. Um, that's what they've been asking for. This is an all India issue. All of India is protesting. So if you look at Ghazipur border now, Ghazipur border, like it's all of like, UP, MP, Rajasthan, that area. Yeah, Shah, uh, uh, single border is mostly all Punjabi because it's the one that, uh, sorry, single border is mostly Haryana and Punjab because it, it links, it, it's that direct highway from Punjab, right? But it's disproportionately being shown to be a Punjab issue where it's not only Punjab. Like, where, like how are you going to get 250 million people just from Punjab? It's, 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 it's not possible. That many people don't exist in Punjab, right? That, that you can't have that number from just Punjab. So that's that. I'm saying outside, yes, it's a, it's a Sikh issue. Um, but here's the thing. The number of people that have been arrested are disproportionately Sikh. The number of people being abused are disproportionately Sikh. The number of, like, the, the, the ways that the government is using to uh, dep- like to change the narrative and to depict it, they're 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 not saying like oh like Hindus are terrorists. They're not saying that. They're saying the Sikhs are Khalistani. That you know they want a separate nation. They're not saying that about the, about the Hindus or the Muslims. So we're being the Sikhs are being disproportionately attacked. That's also another reason why we're speaking out disproportionately. You know, like and here's the thing though. I don't think like in because in a majority Hindu country, I don't think Hindus have felt targeted, right? Sikhs have. That's another reason why they feel like it's like a huge need to speak out, to be vocal. And I think that vocalness is what's painting this narrative, but it's it's not correct. When the the entire country is an is, is in an uproar. I mean, the BJP belt, which is um. UP, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, like uh, uh, in Haryana, like, 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 I think MP like moved its elections because they're like, oh, shit, we're gonna lose. I think like, like, like the BJP is afraid of like, literally just being wiped out. So I don't think to like, it's fair to say, oh, it's just a Punjab issue. The Indian government very well knows it's not a Punjab issue. They're trying to save their behind in the states in which they can still hold power. They're, they're very scared. They're pushed into a corner. They don't even know how to react. Like just recently, like for, uh, with um, Claudia Webb, the Indian High Commission tweeted at her directly a formal letter. Like that's how out of it they are. The BJP is, are having like their overseas counterparts running, doing rallies. Like, so you've heard of like citizens, communities, protesting outside of consulates, outside of embassies, you know, to say like, hey, we're not happy with this. We're citizens protesting against the government. Have you ever heard of a government protesting against citizens? Ever. That, that's technically what's going on with these car rallies. If somebody's like, oh, we're going to take a car rally through Brampton or we're going to take a car rally out in front of the Gurdwara or, or the BJP car rally out in front of, through South Hall, if it's called a BJP car rally and they're taking it in front of a, a community center, it's a government protesting against citizens. What? It's wild. It's wild. And, and that's literally what's going on. So that, that's what I have to say. Like, it's going to be, it's going to take time, but these bills are going to be repealed. And the BJP party for the next 10 to 20 years is like, is going to be pushed into the ground is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just going to come on to the question. 26th of Jan, obviously, we had um, the the Republic Day and we also had 
the entire, you know, farmers' protest come out, and it was a very peaceful protest. You know, I still say um, it was a very peaceful protest on on the twenty sixth as well. Um, just the fact that we weren't shown that, but if you have seen the real footage, then you will know that. Now, mm-hmm. after that, we saw like a little bit of a drop in mm-hmm. like the height. Then Rihanna tweeted, I think a couple of days later or a week later, I think she did. Um, and then it kind of came back into the trend. It was trending everywhere. Um, it was on the news for a couple of days. And, you know, Sky News uh, and all of these, you know, news channels um, mm-hmm. were, were talking about it. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Because our people are still sitting out there. I think that this is going to just keep getting bigger. So here, you have to understand one thing that I don't know how it got to Rihanna. I, I honestly haven't got a clue. But I, I do know that what ended up happening was uh, the uh, Congressional Tom Lanto's Human Rights Commission tweeted. Then two days, so 26, 27, 28, they, they tweeted then um, the following week, we had the Human Rights of Watch, which is an American institution, release an article. Then we had Rihanna tweet. Then the Human Rights Watch released another article. Then Greta tweeted. What we have to understand is that Modi is not well-liked. And we have to keep that in mind. Yes. Does Britain want to, you know, create a trade deal with India? Yes. Does, does Trudeau want the Indian vaccine? Yes. Does um, Biden want to, you know, keep good relations with India because at least India does call itself a democracy? Yes. But do people actually like Modi? No, because their ideologies don't match. He's not someone with a democratic vision, right? He's a fascist. And people know that. Leaders know that. Governments know that. So if Modi or the BJP is sitting here thinking that Modi is going to be able to, you know, garner external support, um, support into, you know, to quash opposition, it's not going to happen. You know, I think what, what is, what we're seeing is I think foreign governments are using this moment to kind of push Modi out of power. I think everybody wants to be good with India, but Modi is not India. Modi is one party. That's what people don't understand. You can be pro-India and not like Modi. And that's what's happening is what I think. I don't think, I don't think, I don't know about the British government because I feel like, you know, with people like Preeti Patel and like other, other individuals, like it might not be the same. But I do know in the American government, people really do not want Modi around. So even though the American government is very, very pro-India, very pro-India. Like I said, pro-India does not mean pro-Modi. Modi was banned, banned from America. Like, like there was an uh, like an Indian Gujarati congressman by the name of Ami Bera who got who started this whole process of getting his um his ban revoked and helping him get a visa and this and that. So we have to understand like the undercurrent of this. Yes, at the top, we're like, why isn't Biden speaking? What, like, what is going on? But just because he hasn't spoken doesn't mean he hasn't done anything, right? Right? Just because Trudeau has spoken doesn't mean he has done something about it, right? Words aren't, words don't, unless you're there in the background actually affecting change. So does Modi understand this is the other question. I think he's a little bit of a nut. I, I, I think when you have, so he's a Trump, right? I think he just expects everybody is going to love him and he's going to be great without realizing mm, you're in, you're in tough water, you know, like yeah, yeah, you're about to drown. Like you need to ask for a life vest. He, he's not getting it. And I think that's going to be his downfall. Um, I, there was something else I wanted to say. What's going to happen? Um, so if we relate this to Kassan protests in the past, and just because I've done my research on this quite recently, the Pankhari Sambal movement, when the British released three bills, kind of similar, where they just kind of wanted to take the farmer's land, that lasted nine months. Grassroots movements usually take a long time to take into effect, right? BLM ha- actually had been going on for much longer than when it came into the forefront, Right. Also, what we often see in like any type of rebellions or any type of big movements is that in between, 
we also have a change of leadership that takes place. It's usually the people who start these things aren't the people who finish it. So I, I do see a new wave of leaders emerging from this. And I'm actually very optimistic. Like, I, like there's a few people that I'm a huge fan of. Like when I say a huge like fan that like I've actually grown to really like, admire and that I'm working really closely with that I really hope emerge as leaders and start influencing the union leaders into which direction to take this into. And that that's if you study past um, and like all all across the globe, if you, if you study past grassroots rebellions and movements, that's usually what happens. So those are two things. A, we have to get ready for a very long haul. Very long haul. Two, we have to be ready for, you know, a slowing down, a little shake up, and then it's going to go like this. Because that, that's usually the trend that takes place. Like if you study the Pagri Small Movement, if you study things like rebellions that have happened in Africa or the Middle East, that's usually the trend that takes place. Yeah. Yeah. So we've spoken about the farmers protest. But there, there was this question I was thinking about all morning and there was this video that was going viral this morning of um of obviously a Bollywood actor, you know, he was stopped and um I mean, you know, great. That's great. Another thing that I saw on Twitter was somebody um wanting to go to the Gurdwara. And this is moving away slightly about from the farmers' protest, but it is linked to the farmers' protest. Okay, these feelings, these emotions have kind of like, you know, been evolved during the farmers' protest. Now, I personally, this, this is probably my personal thought coming in, that, you know, whether you're a bad person, whether you support the farmers' protest, whether you don't, there is no one that can stop you from going into a gurdwara and matha teke ona ek kisi da haq nahi hai ka ki tode to haq chhad de kyunki na hi ta tusi rab ban sakde ha te na hi thonu ho guru da haq guru thonu khud haq kade nahi devega ho guru da bhi haq nahi hoga oda so do you kind of agree with this kind of, I, i really wanted to ask you about it because you know i are kind of stopping these people from going to the gurdwara are we right Okay, so I haven't seen this video or seen this news. Um, we cannot stop people from entering the Gurdwara. Everybody has the right. And that, see, Sikhi stands for that. Everybody's welcomed in our Gurdwaras. Everybody's welcome to Langar. Everybody is welcome to shelter. And those are the fundamental tenets of Sikhi. And if somebody is doing anything against them, then like they need to sit down and reread Sikh history because that's wrong. However... If there's someone that's trying to cause violence or disruption, that's a whole different story. Yeah, yeah. Because I did see a tweet where there was someone in Canada that was like, oh, you know, we're going to be walking the, sh- the sidewalk up and down in front of some gurdwara and we're going to be doing this and that. That I did see and that I was like, oh, report this and call the police and make sure there's, you know, police is on your side. Like I did send this to some, send it to some people that I knew in Brampton, like, hey, send this to the police, like, you know, this this person just trying to kind of create violence and you know you know discredit the Sikh community so there there's a lot happening all i'm going to say is that everybody needs to be very mindful of what's going on what people are trying to do now is discredit the Sikh community the Sikh community is a very well respected community within the diaspora very well respected we have people in high places in high offices and corporations you know we're doctors and lawyers and dentists and you know we we do well for ourselves we live well we live honestly we work hard so don't let do not let the indian government like in any way shape or form hurt that reputation so when it comes to who's allowed into the gurdwara aao ji matha teko ji langar khao ji jao ji be vigilant you know we have sevadars at the gurdwara tell them watch whoever comes in and out watch what they're doing but but you can't say oh you don't you don't support the farmers so you can't come into the gurdwara you can't say that but here's the other thing um the consulate generals or or the people from the consulates have been asking people at the gurdwaras to come in speak and we have like a, all agreed that we're not going to be letting anyone from the indian embassy or the indian consulate general in that's one thing yes we're not going to let them in and speak and do anything or you know spread misinformation but they can come in and matha take and leave right we can watch them come in matha take have longer go out like you know like that and and 
people who go to one gurdwara they all know each other communities know each other I, like i know in england the communities are pretty big but especially in the united states i'm i'm a huge proponent of you can't tell someone that they can't come to the gurdwara you can't you can't yeah. do it it's yeah. it's it's catch 22 you just can't do it well that's amazing i'm i'm glad you 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 said that because i think there's a lot of this like uh, confusion going on you know there's a lot of emotions there's everybody's kind of upset but more than uh, i think this upset kind of feeling is probably the incorrect one there's a lot of anger mm-hmm. and then we are kind of i think i would say we that we are sometimes you know going off on a tangent we are sometimes talking about other things as well because mm-hmm. there is anger and like mm-hmm. you said there is a lot of history as well yeah um, in terms of like, you've been going out to all these protests you you've done everything you could um how long are you going to keep like how long are you going to keep on doing it i'm i'm not going to stop <laughs> at this point i'm a lot emotion emotional than most people and uh, I'm in a very unique position where I can like I said a lo- I'm sure there's a lot of people in India that want to be a lot more vocal but they're they're scared of repercussions I'm in a position where I can right I'm in a position where I I can rile people up I can keep the fire going and I'm going to do whatever I can whatever is required of me whether that's posting on social media whether that's helping you know other people in any way whether that's getting word about out about protests whether that's just talking to people and helping raise awareness like i'm in a unique position where i have the time i have the energy i can right and because i'm in the position i am like i i also feel like it's a social obligation for me right if i don't do it who who will like like who's going who's going to do it but but on that on that note sorry i'm interrupting on that note your career is there as well so are you not cuz you know a, a big part of the punjabi movies industry is that you have to some point go to punjab you have to work there so are you not afraid of that side of the career kind of you know so like- i'm not afraid of my work like i i like i said i'm probably not going to be going back to india for a very long time and i was actually not thinking of working as much any more after i got married anyways because like obviously my spouse was going to be in america like what am i going to be doing like 6 months out of the year in india right yeah. like relate like relationships don't work like that and he and i had already been long distance for for years right and i'm even now like i live in massachusetts and he used to be in california so um like it just wouldn't make any sense so in my head i already had that that like I might do a movie I might not like it was like when I when I'm doing this I'm not thinking about movies like that's not it I'm thinking about like my grandma wants to see me do this she's got some stuff going in her head there are other people in her position thinking the same thing you know like she's like in she's 90 she probably has another 10 years of her life like we're not going to I'm not going to let her not see this through successfully like if she like if she goes like she's going to go knowing that something good happened within the Sikh community like that that's what she's going to see one way to heal trauma is to make them understand that times have changed you know you can propagate healing by 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 showing them that things have changed right you know like for instance in a relationship if 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 you know you've been fighting or you've been upset about things or things are going wrong but then all of a sudden the your significant other shows you like hey i've changed this has changed this is different you're like oh you know like there's been effort put in like okay this makes me this makes me better this can work so the same way when our elders have trauma if you show them hey we're not being persecuted anymore we're stronger we're strong this is not going to happen anymore your grandchildren and great grandchildren are not going to go through this we're going to live peacefully and we're going to live happily and we're going to you know we're going to propagate we're going to be just fine that's a way to heal that trauma right and that's uh, that's what i wish everybody from the diaspora understood you want to see your grandparents happier and to die peacefully show them that their sacrifices were worth it Sh- like like we underestimate the amount of families who lost someone in 84 we 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 really underestimate that number because obviously the government's like oh there's only 3000 people that died no there were in the hundreds of thousands that went missing so the the amount of families impacted by that. i mean like like for instance 
Juggy Joho being in prison, his wife, his mom, his brother, his cousins, his uncles, his puas, his puppers are all affected by that. How are they going to heal from that? How are his nephews and nieces or, or anyone ever going to heal from that? That trauma, like, oh, like he went to India and he got picked up. It can happen to me. Am I safe here? Is everything going to be okay? Is everything going to be fine? That's going to be in there until they realize that they have some sort of power in their hands. Times have changed. And no, you're fine now. Like that's going to stay until then. So it's on us to make sure our grandparents feel that. So yeah, I'm not going to stop to hell with my work. Um, I'm not really starving at all, so I'll be fine. Um, yeah, like it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, more, more power to you, uh, Monica. You're one of the very, uh, uh, very few, very few that has come out spoken so, um, honestly, uh, and you've touched upon things that people probably never want to talk about, you know. Uh, people are afraid of even saying or taking some specific names that you have taken in the life. So um, it's it's nice to see, you know, being an actress is not easy at all. But then coming as an actress, but also as an activist is, is huge. So uh, a lot of power going out to you. I think you make the, make the community very, very proud. It's, it's nice to see that there are like influential figures like you around we can look up to as well like us girls we look up to you and we we see that you know what this is what we want to do as well mm -hmm. so um everybody's efforts are going to pay off and and i think we're going to soon hopefully fingers crossed we see some good results come in coming out soon um and, and we have heard some good things recently so anything you want to say to everybody watching before? no just that post every day please take time out to research research where all this started, research about, you know, um, the water being taken away from Punjab, read about water being uh, the state of Punjab being split, read about, you know, why Punjab was split, read about how, you know, Punjab is going to be, you know, turned is going to become a desert within the next 20 to 30 years, or it's estimated to be read about Monsanto, read about why Punjab is, you know, has the highest num amount of cancer highest rate of cancer in all of India read about it read 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 and don't stop reading um it's very important to know what's going on it's very important other than that thank you so much Rajdeep I'm I'm very glad that we did this because you know you helped me reach a wider audience and um it's always it's 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 always needed like the more awareness we can raise the more more conversations we can have like it's always important yeah yeah and obviously, if you're not planning to go down to India or anytime soon, the UK is always here for you and you can always come down to the UK and we can Chill. talk about this more openly on a wider kind of platform. Absolutely. I would, I would love that. If I'm ever in the UK, we'll definitely hit you guys up. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming live and, and we'll be in touch. Absolutely. You guys have um, a good day. Have a good night. Bye. You have a good day too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.